So the wheel of time has turned, and the pattern has decided to weave us a TV show coming down the pipes from Amazon Studios. I, like countless others, am incredibly excited. There's so much to look forward to right now. Casting news, release dates, trailers, set photos, etc, etc. All of it just got me on the edge of my seat. I'm ready. But I see people constantly saying things like they better get the channeling right, they have to have the massive battles, do my as wells is critical, make it or break it. That's at least three seasons, four seasons down the road. Relax. But not enough people, in my opinion, are touching on what I think really is the heart of the Wheel of Time, and well, maybe they could still pull off a great fantasy series if they flubbed this. I really do believe it is the essence of what makes Watt what it really is, and to me, it would not be Wheel of Time if they missed this. No, it's not the CGI of the channeling. It's not even the size of the world. It's not the shadow. It's not the look of the Trollocs. It's the friendships that exist from book one. Recently, fellow booktuber and friend of mine, Murphy DePier, did her review of The Eye of the World, and she talked about something that has struck me again and again about the series, and every time I pick up any of the books and read really any scene, it's the fact that the relationships and dynamics between these characters are so well realized. You do not only know character A and B incredibly well, but you know how character A views character B. And you know how character B views character A because Robert Jordan took the time and care to make sure that every dynamic makes sense. You understand the evolution of how these relationships came to where they got to. And there's a story told between every character and how their friendship or love grows for one another. Even with just the beginning party, these people right away in the eye of the world, in the two rivers, and Emmons Field, we feel the love that is there, whether it's Nynaeve's mothering instinct and need to protect, Matt and Rand looking out for each other's backs while they're destitute on the road, essentially living as beggars, Perrin and Egwene rescuing each other and coming to terms with this huge, wider world they've been thrown into. It just helps entice you and bring you in deeper to the story because you're not just in it to see what happens with Perrin. You're invested in seeing how his and Egwene's friendship can survive these incredible circumstances. Some of the best moments in the entire series aren't huge battles or explosions or weaves. No, it's the times when suddenly these relationships become stressed. They begin to fracture. Everyone goes through the paces when it comes to their personal lives because that is a realistic consequence of living in this grander, wider world. If farm boys are being elevated to the level of nobles, demigods, what have you, of course the love they have for one another, the brothers and sisters they essentially are to each other, will change. That dynamic will grow and evolve. And to me, that's where the heart of the Wheel of Time stems from. It's seeing how Perrin and Rand start differing, how they start to clash. It's seeing the incredible relationship and bond develop between Elaine, Egwene, Nynaeve, Min, Avienda, Brigitte, and Tom. They all form almost a family, looking out for each other, understanding and coming to grips with who one another are. And that is a huge chunk of the series. It's devoted to understanding who and what these people are to each other. If Amazon is able to capture that, take us, the viewer, on a journey watching these friendships go through the paces, sometimes fall apart and sometimes spring anew, that, to me, will be the wheel of time done right. Yes, watching Dumai's Wells happen will be awesome if the visual effects are right and the emotional payoff has been set up correctly. Absolutely 100%. But for me, the reason Dumai's Wells hit all the harder wasn't just the world-shifting dynamic of suddenly there's this force of men who can channel Unleashed. Yes, that's huge and incredible. But the most impactful moment to me as the reader was when Rand thought he killed men and what that did to him emotionally and thinking 
the dragon might have just been broken by his own actions because of the relationship that exists and the love that was blooming between these two characters. These relationships are used for emotional payoff, to raise stakes, comedic moments. There's so many just funny moments throughout the series, especially around Matt because we know how people view him versus how he really is. All of this comes together, in my opinion, to weave what is the wheel of time. Let me know in the comments down below if you disagree. Do you think, no, I'm wrong, they just need to get the world and channeling right, and to you that'll be what, and I am just need to shut up, I'm too sentimental? Let me know. I'd love to see the audience's response down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And on a scale of one to 10, how hype and optimistic are you for the Wheel of Time? That'd be two different scores. One for your hype, one for your optimism. Because I'm hype out of 10, and optimism, I'm out of question mark. I still have so many questions. I'm not sure yet, but uh, I look forward to seeing your responses, and I hope you guys have a good one. Peace.